when it comes to people who like have trouble conceiving, mm-hmm. um, there's all these evolving technologies that are coming out that are helping people um, have kids, mm-hmm. whether it's like freezing their eggs or freezing sperm, vice versa. I don't know how it all works, but there's a lot of people, a lot of which um, who I know who are my age in like their mid thirties and they can't have kids to save their lives. Mm-hmm. And they're trying everything they can to, to, to have children. Um, I've had people, I've had experts in, in this field explain to me that that's a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, it's a bad idea not necessarily like from a moral perspective, but from like a, a evolutionary um, biological perspective, mm-hmm. because it's supposed to be the body. The, the, the case they made was that's like the body's w- or the, the that's evolution's way of filtering out mutations or something like this. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it's complicated. Because, and it's also age. I think right. age has a lot to do with it. Yeah. So age is a huge factor. Um, you know, there's a reason they call like, I think it's like 34 and up women geriatric pregnancies, which seems <laughs> crazy. You know, I mean, it's like not that oh, old. Well, that's what they actually call them that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I forget if it's, I think 34 is the cutoff. Mm-hmm. At that point, you're a geriatric because at that point, your risk of having some kind of of you have your your child have some kind of genetic disorder is just so much higher, um, and that's because you know as women we produce all of our eggs um, right up the, at the beginning, and so the longer they're in our body, the more chance there is for mutations to to mm-hmm. build up. Um, so that's something you know that's happening. It doesn't mean you can't have a healthy child, right. but it certainly means that your risk is higher. Right. We used to think that that was just women. Men also we are finding have more mutations as they age. So the the chance of passing on those mutations increases as the father gets older as well. Um, so you've got, you know, interesting ingredients going in of questionable, um, you know, the the sell by date as we're getting close there. As well, I just you're getting Robert older. De Niro had a kid, and he's, yeah, yeah. he's like eighty, I right, think. Right, yeah. So there was actually some really incredible work done in Utah um, because there are a lot of families in Utah that have, you know. 17 kids or something like that. And so they were actually able to look at the rate of mutation over the however many years those kids were born and see which mutations were coming from the father, which were coming from the mother, and how did those rates change. And they did see a difference in the number of mutations that was inherited from the father as the father got older. Um, But then you also have this factor of like, maybe people aren't having kids not because of any of those biological reasons, but because of um, like forever chemicals in the water. Like that affects fertility. I think microplastics affect Mm -hmm. fertility. You know, there's all these other environmental stress affects fertility. So it's like, what's driving those individuals not to be able to conceive? Is it biological factors? Is it environmental factors? Um, Yeah, well, we had Dr. Shauna Swan on here a couple mm -hmm. years ago, and she was explaining how um, they've been studying, sampling, the sperm count uh, and the testosterone levels of men since the 50s. Mm-hmm. And it's been going down by like 1% per year since the 50s. And she wow. says since like the mid 2000s, it started going down by like 2% a year. Okay. And so um, you must be getting low. <laughs> I was like, she asked me, she's like, can you guess uh, which areas of the country have the lowest sperm counts? Uh huh. And my guess was I was going to be like the populated cities, you know, yeah. all the, you know, cars going everywhere. You're living sure. in a little box and you're not as healthy as you're living out like an open farmland. She goes, mm-hmm. no, the people who live on the farms, open area because of all of the chemicals they spray right. on the crops and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And um, the glyphosate, which was crazy to me. And um you know, that combined with like the microplastics that are everything, everything is plastic. Mm-hmm. Our, our, our world is designed to become is designed to make money on things by mm-hmm. making them cheaper, more affordable, more efficient. And plastic is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Everything's yeah. plastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, ninety nine percent of this room is made of plastic. <laughs> and um, she was explaining how that's like very, very bad for human beings. And mm-hmm. if you want to be, if we want to um, propagate our species into the future, she's like, I don't know what we're going to do, but that's not, we're, we're not going in the right direction. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, people have to resort to things like in vitro fertilization or yeah. freezing their eggs. Like you said, I mean, that circumvents, you know, some of the mutational issues that I was talking about. Freezing if the freeze, eggs. If you freeze your eggs early, then they're like the fresher eggs, you know, they're mm-hmm. not aging with you. Um, 
But then, yeah, like once you get into in vitro fertilization, then there's stuff like how do you pick which embryo you're going to carry forward if you do have a successful, you know, um, if you do have, what is it? I, f- I forget exactly what they call it. But anyway, if, if like one- the implantation? Yes, order? yeah. Okay. So like, you know, then there's, then you get into people are starting to filter based on genetics and that's a whole other weird ethical Designer debate. babies. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's very complicated. That's why I have dogs only. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you choose to, you choose to yes, not have kids? Yes, I am intentionally childless. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Dogs are, <laughs> dogs are awesome. I love my dogs, yeah. Is it possible that when some people- get together and try to reproduce Mm -hmm. that sometimes nature just says no, because this is not a good mix. Yeah, that's certainly. And um, it's, there's something really interesting that's happening in our world, uh, which is that we're with globalization, we're having combinations of genes that have never happened before in the history of humans. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, you have people from different parts of the world who have been right. separated for right. 50, 60,000 years. Right. And so these mm-hmm. combinations we're finding sometimes introduce you know, diseases that are, have a genetic basis that mm-hmm. we didn't know were possible. Right. Um, so that's certainly a possibility. And yeah, in that way, the body just says, nope. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah. then also there's all, it brings up the possibility that maybe that some of those combinations will do some really cool things for us as humans um, because they've never been you know, in the same individuals in the last 60,000 years. Mm. Um, let's pause real quick. I can use the restroom. Yeah. Go we'll be right back. All right. We're back, folks. Okay. Steve just found an article about how uh, a third parent's DNA can prevent inherited diseases published just a couple of months ago, July 20, July 16th, 2025. Scientists can protect children from being born with certain devastating genetic disorders by creating three parent babies, according to uh, results of a landmark study released Wednesday. So this is, you have, you know, in the normal way, the genetic material from the mother and the father, but then you have, it's when there's a problem with the mitochondria. Um, And so instead of getting the mitochondria from the mother, you can get the mitochondria from another person, um, a third parent, um, so that this individual will still have, you know, if you only looked at the other, you know, their normal chromosomal DNA, they would look like they're just a product of their two parents, but then their mitochondria are from this additional individual. Oh, would it have to be a woman? Or can no, you get no, mitochondria no. from a man? Yeah, you can get mitochondria from anyone. Oh, really? Um, wow. It's just that mitochondria usually comes in the egg, um, and so that's why you inherit your mitochondria from your mother. Right. Wow. That's so very... This was a very cool example of science changing uh people's lives scary yeah i mean it's i mean it's like uh just like crazy experiments we're doing on 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 ourselves yeah (laughs) well yeah and it used to be you know like thinking about genetically modifying embryos or babies or humans or things like that you know i would just say like oh we're just not there yet with the technology but the scary thing is we're there you know we can do this um but you know, now the question is, should we? And, and what should or shouldn't we do? 